Laura Palatin here. Thank you for watching this video where I'm going to give you some tips, tricks, and suggestions for managing fibromyalgia symptoms. I'd like to just tell you a little bit about who I am so that you know where this information is coming from, and then I'll jump right into the suggestions. First, as I said, my name is Laura Palatin. I am a massage therapist, Reiki master teacher, artist, and writer. I also do some other stuff, but that's really what matters for this video today. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia about 16 years ago, and before that I had been a stay-at-home mom and administrative assistant. I loved having kind of a high-energy life. I was not a type A. I always considered myself a B plus, but that's kind of open to interpretation. Um, and I just worked really hard, and I, and I was always go, go, go. And then after my third child, I just never seemed to hit my stride again. I had um, tummy trouble in the morning mostly. I had a lot of body aches and anxiety, stress really seemed to just, I felt it everywhere in my body and I got really worn out easily. So it was a very challenging time. Um, my, But I really thought it was kind of just... Um, what your body feels like as you're getting older. And I thought, you know, having that third child just took its toll. Um, and then my daughter was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and my then husband told the doctor, oh, you've got to meet my wife. She has more symptoms than, than our daughter. And that's how I found out that I had fibro. At first I was kind of relieved. I thought, okay, it's not just aging. It's not just going to get worse from here. I can take some medication and maybe it'll get better. Medication was not a, a path that worked for me. They started me on antidepressants because it kind of fibro can mirror antidepression uh, in the brain because it, it is sometimes related to anxiety, sometimes not, but in my case I feel like it was. So we tried that path and it just gave me a debilitating headaches. I also tried some of the other drugs that are on the market and though that class seemed to make my hands shake. And as an artist, that was just a no-go for me. So I was really in a place where I had to figure out how to deal with this on my own. It caused kind of a shift in my life, right? Because I knew that I was going to have less time that I could use the way I wanted to. It wasn't that I had a death sentence. It was just that the time that I have while I'm alive is more limited because I have good days and I have bad days. So I had to become more mindful about how I wanted to spend those days. And I left being an administrative assistant and I decided to make my life about helping other people's lives be better. So I went to massage school, that was my first step, and I had wonderful instructors there. I learned so much about the human body. Shout out to Jeff. He was such an amazing anatomy instructor. And I also got to learn from a wonderful uh, just so many wonderful people. It would be like an award show to thank them all. Uh, Tashina and Tamara Mondragon and um, Marion Hakata because I learned Reiki from her and I got to go through the entire process and become a Reiki master teacher. And all of these things informed me about my body, my mind-body connection. I learned about um, not only massage but also uh, meditation and mindfulness and that led me to put together my own set of ideas and and strategies for handling my fibromyalgia which brings us to item number one and I wouldn't be being true to myself if I didn't say I think massage can be very helpful for fibromyalgia patients gentle light stroking called effleurage you don't want deep tissue, no elbows, no implements, just gentle, soothing massage. Done correctly, this can give you the effect of like a hundred hugs from your best friend. It's really wonderful. One of my main goals with managing my fibro is to bring down my, my anxiety and my energy to where it's very consistent and, and mellow. I can be very excited about something, very into something, but I don't have to feel it in my whole body. So I can just live with the excitement in my head and let my body be comfortable. And massage is just amazing for that. Another item um, is item number two, the Epsom salt soak. Now, when I first heard about Epsom salt soaks, I really didn't understand uh, the ideal way to do this. So I'm just gonna run through that really quick. So I like to buy really inexpensive Epsom salt because I'm a budget girl. And you can buy that at Walmart, um, 
you know, thrifty, wherever that you go to buy drugs, medication, grocery stores, sometimes hardware stores, it's really easy to find. And I prefer the variety that has lavender in it because lavender for me is very calming so take at least a cup really you can't overdo this put it in your bathtub run the water really really hot and dissolve that epsom salts when it when it's dissolved turn the water off turn the water off when it's dissolved then you want to bring the level up but with warm water so if it turns your skin pink it's too hot if it gives you a chill it's too cold you want it right in that sweet spot in the middle think baby bath and you know turn down the lights burn some candles i like music and ice water for some reason but all of that works for me this is all about figuring out what helps you feel better or the person you're trying to help if you're not the fibromyalgia sufferer and once it's done towel off and then probably number three is focus on getting a good night's sleep that's my third suggestion it's so important I think a ritual every night is very helpful to getting a good night's sleep so I wear pajamas I know it sounds kind of silly for a person my age but I put on my jammies braid my hair brush my teeth I like chamomile tea with a little lavender in it and some people are good with with the electronic devices at bedtime other people it doesn't work so you're going to, have to figure out what works for you personally i like reading books in which the characters are pleasant uh, that seems to set me up for a good night's sleep and pleasant dreams so that's number three number four is exercise don't roll your eyes at me <laughs> I know people have a hate-hate relationship with exercise and we hear it from everyone. I'm not advocating running marathons. I'm saying go for a walk every day. I think being out in nature is extraordinarily helpful for helping people with their mind-body connection. You're out in nature. Not having walls around you so that you just have more freedom changes your mindset. And of course you're moving those big muscle groups as well. I'm also a big fan of strength training. It, uh, it can help with your posture. It can help with individual muscle groups. That releases a whole different set of hormones. People who exercise on a regular basis, women have less estrogen. So that can help with certain things that women of a certain age might be going through. That's just kind of a complication, but, but these are all good things. And when I'm doing strength training, I do, I do it until I feel even a little twinge of not good. So sometimes, you know, I'll only get three sets in of something. Sometimes I can do more. The minute you start feeling yucky, you stop. It, it's better to do it twice a day than to push yourself. Just not going to help you. Okay, number five, meditation. And I got to know, like I said, meditation when I was in massage school. And I did uh, guided visualizations with different classes that I took. And when I started teaching Reiki, I was able to lead other people through guided meditations. Really find this very helpful. The ability to settle your own mind and body into a relaxed, relaxed state is huge. Also, you can use specific techniques to alleviate anxiety in the dental office or job interview, or just to help yourself get to sleep can't overstress the benefits of meditation. You can remap your brain. How cool is that? Without drugs? Come on, that's awesome. I have made meditation CD and I'll put a link in the description as to where you can go check that out. Very, very helpful stuff. The number six item I wanna talk to you about is physical therapy. And the reason I'm bringing physical therapy up is because we get so accustomed to pain that we just stop listening to the body's signals. If your neck hurts all the time, after a while you go, okay, this has been hurting for six months and I'm not dead, so it's not an alarm anymore. And our doctors can also, and medical professionals can, can also be complicit in this because they're looking for stuff to fix. And physical therapy, 
is something that you have to carry forward with you in your life. It's a tool, but it's not like a fix. It's something that is a tool that you use to maintain a lot more comfortable body. So if you've got pain that is con consistent, persistent, and you're sick of it, talk to your medical professional and, and look into getting physical therapy. These people, their whole world is helping us feel better. They can be very, very gifted and helpful people. Finally, I just want to say, if you feel like your medical professional is not giving you the help you need to get better, please consider reaching out to somebody else. Even if your doctor tells you they believe you and they're with you and they're trying to help you, if you've been with that doctor for a while and you're not seeing results, if you're not feeling like you're getting more good days, reach out. You know, find somebody else that can help you because even somebody that's good intentioned may not have the skill set to help you and and you you deserve to have the very best of days i hope that you've enjoyed this video if you have questions leave it in the comments if you enjoy this kind of content if you'd subscribe and um there's a little bell next to subscribe if you touch that you'll get notified when new videos are uploaded and i would just love for you guys to become a part of a community where we all help each other feel better thank you very much for sticking with me through this and i hope to see you again soon bye